Hi, I thought I'd give some problem solving tips for engineers and some for students. First thing, of course, is to define the problem. Actually write down what you're trying to solve. My students often think they're solving the right thing, but they end up giving me the wrong answer because they didn't understand the question in the first place. So make sure you understand what the problem is and define it explicitly. For example, let's say you have a bridge and you want to replace the bridge. In this case, this is an old marsh arch and it's a little narrow. So the farmers, some of them had troubles getting across without hitting the arches. So let's say we wanted to replace this bridge. What are the next steps I would do? I would break down the problem into smaller bite-sized pieces and I'd gather information and, and this is an important thing, skills to solve the bite-sized pieces. I mean, do you know how to do everything in a problem, do you understand concrete design, steel design? Do you understand hydrology? There's a lot of things going into a problem such as a bridge replacement, and you may have to learn some new skills. So break down the problem, get information, and get better skills for some of these questions. For example, if we wanted to replace the bridge, what kind of bridge are you going to replace it with? So the problem is replace the bridge. What kind of bridge? What kind of material are you going to use? Concrete or steel? Is it going to be a steel bridge or a concrete bridge? What kind of soil conditions do you have? Water levels? What flood level are you going to design it for? 50-year flood, 100-year flood, 75-year flood? You have to figure that out. What's the width and length going to be? What the foundation types are going to be? Is it going to be stage construction? Do you have to keep this open while you build another bridge beside it? What's the bridge life? In this case, do you want it to last 50 years, 100 years, 200 years? Comes into what kind of design you're going to make. What kind of code are you going to use? Is it Ashto code? Is it a European code? Who's the designer of the project? How much experience do they have? Are there contractors available to to build the bridge that you're going to design. Maintenance. How maintenance free do you want this to be? Steel bridges get inspected more often because there could be some problems. Maybe a concrete bridge would last longer. And of course, cost. You got to figure out what is cost effective for this site. So here's a steel haunch girder bridge that I designed and it was stage constructed. We built the first stage, uh, as you can see in front, and then we tore down the truss bridge in the back that was being used while we built the first stage and then widened it out. So stage construction. The interesting thing about this steel bridge, it's haunched girders. That means they're variable depth girders. And it's the first steel bridge that I ever designed. So I had a lot to learn. <laughs> and I wrote everything out. I wrote all the code, all the different kinds of loads that I had to figure out, all the calculations for each different load case. And when you're doing stage construction, there's a lot of load cases because you gotta do the first stage and you gotta do dead loads when you're constructing it and dead loads when there's a deck on it and then, you know, all sorts of things. So I broke it down into small pieces and the pieces I didn't understand, I researched and gained the skills so I can answer the questions. At the end of it, you wanna review your solution. Is it appropriate? Is it workable? Is it achievable? I made this little house in Revit, this little building. Now, what kind of a solution to a problem would this be? You might be able to use this as an office for a real estate broker or small architectural firm, but would it fit in New York? Maybe not. It's just a small building and you probably want to use your land and build a really tall building. Would this fit somewhere else? Would it be good for a gas station? I don't know. But always review your solution and see if it's appropriate. Is it workable? Is it achievable? And is it cost effective? And it doesn't mean like the lowest cost ever. It just means that we're paying good money to get a good product. I'd also say there's a few things that you should learn too. You should get better verbal and visual presentation skills. I went and when that bridge that I showed you, I went to the town and we presented that we're going to replace their current historical bridge with this new bridge. And I had 100 people look at me and go, no, we, we don't want it restore, uh, replaced. We want it restored. And I had to explain why we couldn't restore it. It was just too expensive. It's a truss bridge. You couldn't widen it. I had some visual presentation material, PowerPoint, you know, we're engineers, but nowadays I can do everything in 3D. In that case, we actually built paper models to show the people of the town what their bridge could look like. And it gave them a better sense of, you know, what the finished product would be because they could go around and touch it and see it in 3D. So I would advocate learning how to do some 3D if you're going to present to the public any bridge, any solution and practice. 
I would say continually improve and vary your skills to give yourself a better chance of solving a problem. You know, almost any skill will help you. I will say learn how to sketch, learn how to do 3D, learn about hydrology, bridge design, anything you can. You know, the more you have in your toolbox, the better you're going to have uh, a chance of solving a problem. For example, like 10 years ago, I used to give presentations to elementary schools and I made some uh, gumdrop university badges that I could give out because we were building toothpicks and gumdrops, little bridges. And so I made this little uh, image here and I learned 3D while I was doing it. I got a little bit better and now I can make these kind of images for uh, magazines or technical journals or anything. Are there magazines anymore? But for technical journals and things like that, I have my uh, images on a few covers of to manuals. And this is my latest. I'm learning Blender, so I'm trying to learn more about 3D and uh, how to use animation in presentations. For example, recently I gave this one. This is a 3D model and there's a barrier rail. And I want to show when a truck hits a barrier, how it leans over and it's called the zone of intrusion. So if there's anything close to the barrier rail behind the barrier rail, the truck can hit it. That's why we don't want to place lights or signs or anything behind. If you have a bridge that's in this zone, it could also get hit. So I made this 3D model to show in a presentation. I'll just go over the problem solving steps real quickly. And of course, no steps work for everyone or for every problem, but define the problem. That's pretty simple. Define Define it so you know what you're solving. Again, a lot of students think they're solving the right problem when they hand it in. It's not what was asked of them. Break down the problem into bite-sized portions, gather information, and learn new skills if you need to to solve these bite-sized portions. Review your solution. Is it appropriate? Is it workable? Is it achievable? Increase your presentation skills. So you're a consultant, you did this beautiful bridge, and you want to go out and show the townspeople what you're going to build. If you can't show it properly with with a nice visual image and you can't explain all the different parts and why you're doing it in a language they will understand, you're not going to succeed. Continually improve and vary your skills to give yourself a better chance of solving a problem. I mean, the more you learn about everything, and I don't care what it is, sometime it'll come in. Like I learned how to paint and I've used paintings in some of my presentations because they made the point a little bit better. And some advice for students, <laughs> this is just for my students, never start the problem on the day it is due. Now, this is just a general statement, but I often see students starting a project or trying to do their homework two hours before it's due. Then they run into problems. They don't have the time to research and ponder potential solutions. You need time to think about it. Start the problems as early as you can so you can just think about it. You're having a break. You're going, oh, I'm working on that problem in my mind. Now I know what I need to do. Try to start your problems early. Always hand in something. I will say this as an instructor. Even an incomplete homework set will get you some points. You know, most professors, if you hand it in like just a drawing, they'd probably give you five out of ten. They're just trying to get you some points. Always hand in something. Ask questions as early as possible. Don't wait till two hours again before you have to hand in. Maybe I'm not available. Maybe the instructor is not available. Ask questions as early as possible. So if you start your problem early, you know what kind of questions you want to ask. And of course, the more problems you solve, the better you will get at solving problems. This is, this is something every engineering student figures out. Over a course of four or five years as an engineering student, you learn to solve a lot of problems. And lastly, learn that different solutions can also be a correct solution. I'm always surprised when a student hands in something that I didn't think of, but worked perfectly for the problem. So there's not always one solution to the problem. I mean, if you're doing a math problem, probably one solution. But if I'm asking you to design a building for an architectural studio, there's no set answer for that. It's up to you to decide on what you think would be appropriate and then sell it to me. And I will say this over and over, learn to sketch ideas. These are old drawings that I did for the Honchgerter Bridge, and it just gave me visual representations of what I had to look for, you know? Like, what is the scour depth? Where am I going to put the piers? What kind of piers am I going to use? What kind of piles am I going to use? What about the loading on the left? Draw things out. You don't have to be good at it. It just gives you visual cues, and then you go to meetings with other engineers. You can say, look at this. What do you think? Learn to sketch. It'll really help out in everything you do in engineering.